All right, folks, we have some results from the latest 2020 Democratic Party primary. When it comes to South Carolina, Joe Biden won. Um, and look, this was expected after I posted my video where we looked at a poll from NBC News and Marist, I think, showing that Bernie was like one point uh, from closing that gap between him and Joe Biden. Poll after poll started to show that the you know distance between Joe Biden and Bernie Sanders was widening. And it seems as if he is uh, going to win by a pretty big margin. At the time that I record this, we don't have all of precincts reporting. But with 8% in, Joe Biden has a pretty large lead with 51.9%. Bernie Sanders comes in second with 17.2%. We have Tom Steyer in third with 11.5%. Pete Buttigieg in fourth with 7.5%. Elizabeth Warren in fifth place with 7%. Amy Klobuchar in a distant sixth place with 3.1%. And then we have Tulsi Gabbard in seventh place with 1.2%. And then other candidates get 0.6%. So by the time you see this, odds are that number will change. But as you know, each uh, as the percent kind of ticks up, it does seem as if the you know, the gap isn't moving that much so it seems as if bernie sanders is going to come in a distant second and joe biden will probably get more than 50 percent. let's hope that it's not that high but regardless i want you all to understand that super tuesday is just a couple of days away and for the next three days don't log on to twitter don't watch msnbc or cnn they are going to be insufferable and they're basically going to make it seem as if joe biden is now unstoppable. He's the one to beat. But understand, there's a lot of delegates up for grabs on Super Tuesday. Bernie Sanders is leading in California, in Texas. He's leading in Massachusetts, Elizabeth Warren's home state. It seems like he's competitive in Minnesota, uh, Amy Klobuchar's home state. So we are poised to do very well on Super Tuesday. So this is a defeat and it's frustrating, but understand that there's no reason for us to get down. This was kind of expected. We just kind of were getting... We were winning by such big margins, at least in, in Nevada, that, you know, it felt like a win in South Carolina was possible. But unfortunately, it didn't happen. We had the Clyburn endorsement, with, which certainly helped Joe Biden. Um, and also, I heard from MSNBC's Steve Kornacki. I'm not sure when he said this or what percentage of people had showed up to vote yet. But 10% of the entire electorate voting in South Carolina were young people. So overwhelmingly, this is, you know, um, this was a, an election that was decided by older people disproportionately. And you can kind of see that when that happens, Joe Biden, it, it helped him out a lot. Bernie Sanders does not do well with older people. And certainly that's something that we have to work on. I think that kind of driving home the point about uh, Joe Biden not being good on Social Security, having a record of wanting to cut Social Security is something that we have to emphasize going forward. Um, or maybe we don't, because <laughs> again, this isn't necessarily, I, like, I don't believe that this race is going to fundamentally reshape the dynamics of the primary. We'll see. But I mean, again, Super Tuesday is right around the corner. And is this enough for Joe Biden to catch up? I don't necessarily think that that will be the case. Maybe he performs a little bit better. Maybe he gets a little bit of a boost. But overall, I mean, when it comes to Super Tuesday, millions of votes have already been casted with people voting early. So, you know, we'll see. But I just I don't want you to get too down. Really interesting fact, though, about this is Joe Biden has run for president three times now. South Carolina is the only primary he has ever won. So in a way, I kind of feel bad for him and just want to let him have this victory. You know, he's only going to have this for a couple of days to celebrate until Super Tuesday. Nonetheless, I mean, wow, to run for president three times and uh, only now win. That says something. Now, a question that we ask ourselves after each of these primaries is what's going to happen? Who's going to drop out? I don't believe anyone is going to drop out until after Super Tuesday. Um, Tom Steyer, he poured millions of dollars into this state, and it seems as if he's going to finish in third place. So I don't know where he thinks he's going to be able to win or if he's even competitive at all on uh, Super Tuesday. So if anyone's going to drop out, maybe Tom Steyer, but we'll see. Elizabeth Warren, it seems as if even her own team don't necessarily believe 
that she's going to win any state on Super Tuesday, which is kind of bad. So I don't expect anyone to drop out today. If anyone, maybe Tom Steyer, but likely not. I mean, Super Tuesday is so close that you don't really have that much of an incentive to drop out. If Joe Biden were to lose South Carolina at that point, I mean, you drop out because this really was a must win. Like he was hanging on for dear life. If he didn't get this win, it was arguably over for him. In fact, you can't really even say arguably. It was almost definitely over for him. So he needed this, and now he's going to try to make the case that everyone else should drop out and unite behind him because he's the moderate to take on Bernie Sanders. Um, but I just I don't know that this win is going to be enough to change the dynamics of the race in any real substantial way. But, you know, we'll see. Overall, I don't want Bernie supporters to get too down. This is one state. You know, we won three states in a row. So at some point, we knew we were going to lose at least one contest. I wanted to sweep all 50 states and territories. But, you know, that's not realistic. But on Super Tuesday, uh, I feel very confident going in. We just have to make sure that we don't get arrogant, don't get complacent. We have to always make sure that we, we do enough to get Bernie Sanders, not just over the victory line, but as Kyle Kalinske says, to make him overwin. And we have to pretend as if we are behind, no matter what the polls uh, say. There's a new poll that came out today. I can't recall who uh, it was from, but it showed that Bernie Sanders in California was at 34%. No other candidate crosses that 15% viability threshold, um, which is huge. There's a lot of delegates at stake in California. So that alone, uh, you know, when we're looking at a contested convention, is going to be such an important state can, that can be make or break ultimately um, in terms of whether or not they're going to be able to steal it. Uh, regardless, I don't, I don't want to dwell on this too long. I don't want this to get you down. This is one state. We won three. We lost this one. But Super Tuesday is right around the corner, and the media is going to try to spin it. They're already trying to spin it. They're having, you know, breaking news that Joe Biden has received the coveted Terry McAuliffe endorsement, because that's certainly going to make a difference. But look, they're just going to be insufferable for a couple of days, and then we'll go back to them presumably whining after Super Tuesday, so don't get down. Uh, we'll let Joe Biden have this. He's never won a primary before, so I hope that he enjoys it, uh, because on Super Tuesday, we're coming.